Hey everyone, this is Daniel and this is a continuation of my Power Apps Container Series, video number three. Now after having gone through video number one and video number two, we are finally ready to build our fully responsive home screen. But first, here's my intro video. All right, let's just jump into building our Canvas app. So I'm coming here, I've selected the Canvas app. I'm gonna go with the tab tablet layout. And then the first thing I'll do once it loads is I'll just go ahead and make a very important setting change. So I'll come to File. I'm gonna to go to Screen in and Settings, Screen Size Plus Orientation. And in the Advanced Settings, just make sure that you've toggled all of them off. That's a big important thing for this to be successful. So I click on Apply. Then I'll go to Save. And I'm gonna call that as the uh, Power Apps Container Series 3 Demo. Save it. And we've got a very good, you know, beginning already over here. Now, um, next thing I'm going to do is actually build what is called as the different levels, or at least that's what I call it, the different levels or different tiers of the responsiveness. So as you will kind of see me walk through this, I actually have three different tiers. So the first one is going to be adding the main container outside. And if you actually go look at the Teams one and you've got these templates available, they've done the same thing over there. So it's kind of recommended to style this, uh, to go this way, is have a outside main container. And that outside main container, you make that fully responsive. And I'll show you how you do the main container responsive. But then everything else, all the other measurements for X and Y and height and width, all falls in the outside container. Because the outside container is already responsive. All right, so that's tier one. Tier two, I'm gonna break that down into a header, middle, and footer. That's gonna be tier two. And then tier three is mostly focused on the footer over there. But in there, I'm gonna add two vertical ones. And then I'm gonna break that down with buttons and some text over there. So that's kind of the three tier responsiveness level that I work with. And it works really well. And that's what we're gonna do over here. So let's go and start adding the first one, which is basically the first tier. So I come to the pl uh, plus sign over there. I go to the layout and I go and select container. So the container gets dropped and I go ahead and expand it right now manually but um, and I'll call this as the main main tier. And now for the main tier, the key things that we got to mess with is the height, um, the width, and the X and the Y. So for the X and the Y first, I just make sure it is zero. For the Y, I make sure that is zero. But for the height, you want to go ahead and set that as the parent height. And I do that as parent, I don't do that as app, because now I am not no longer concerned about the um, the app settings that we saw in the you know, in the screen and the size orientation, because I don't care if it is a you know 128 by whatever or things. I just focus on the actual parent over there. And then same thing for the width, it's going to be the parent width. And also when you go and see, when you, you know make those changes, you see that it's already filling it up. So kind of, you know, in, from visual standpoint also, it sees that it's making sense. So that was the main container uh, that we've done, the tier one that I talk, uh, that, that, that's what I say. And it's very important that you get that right. Because if you skip that or miss that step, everything else after that is going to be non-responsive. All right, so after that, we're gonna go ahead and add now the tier two, which is adding three sub-containers. And that's gonna be the header, the middle, and the footer. Now there's a very specific reason I do it the way I do it, um, and you can get comfortable doing it afterwards, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add the header first, I'm gonna add the middle, and I'm gonna add the footer, but when it comes time to putting settings for the middle, I will still reference the footer one, even though the footer settings haven't been added yet. And it'll make sense, so let's just go and do that. So now I come back over here, I'm gonna select that one, and I am going to go back to the, um, the levels, and I mean the uh, layout, and I'm gonna add this container. So when I'm gonna add this container, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename him as the um, uh, the header container. And in the header container, it's X and Y also needs to be zero. So I go ahead and check to see, X is zero, Y is zero, and then it's width. This width you will see is gonna be pretty consistent throughout the entire app, uh, because it's gonna be now the main container's width. All right, so you kind of see automatically that filled up over here. Height is something that you can play around with to kind of match what you like. So for example, in my case over here, uh, my height, I've kind of gone ahead and used this formula over here. So I'm going the main container height, and I'm putting it 1 12th. Now, Daniel, why did you do 1 12th? 
For that, I want you to pay attention to this sizing over here. You see the buttons are, when you put the uh, mouse over that, it gives function or formula. That's because it's a calculated amount. And you see for the height, it's about 64. Now, if you've gone ahead and played and built these things in like the headers and the footers, you know how I put the ones at the bottom powered by Power Apps and I put a header on the top. Um, I've always usually used it on 65 to 70 for the height. So when I came up with this 112th, it gave me around 64. So that kind of matched what I like in my comfort zone. Uh, but you might already have a designated number for your height over there or for your labels. So do the math over here to kind of come up with that number, right? So kind of, you know, go with what I've got over here, but then tweak it to match what you normally work with. All right, so next, make sure that, you, you know, if you're selected over here, click outside it and go back to the main container because we're going to be adding another containers over here and we don't want it to fall subsections. We want it to fall sub to the, um, the main controller. So here now I come in and I am going to add in the layout, um, these ones over here, the horizontal container. So when I add the horizontal container, it goes ahead and stays outside. So what I'll do for now is I'll just go ahead and put it out manually, just kind of giving it a good, just give it an eyeball and then you know we'll tweak the responsiveness. And then same thing, I'm gonna come over here and add the container. Oops, see, it did that mistake. I'm gonna get that out. I gotta go back over here, I gotta select outside that, come back in, go to the layout and then add another container. Aha. So let me just go ahead and drop that over here. Again, I uh, will change all of this, but at least we've dropped all of these. So this one is gonna be our middle container. And this one is going to be our footer container. Now don't worry if yours doesn't look aligned like this one with the headers on the bottom, the middle container, don't worry about that. It, it won't affect your design as well because you might have added something, deleted something, and this kind of, you know, went out of, the same um, you know style that I have. Don't worry about it because the responsiveness will take care of all of that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, add some settings to our middle container. In fact, let's do it with the footer, right? With the footer. So, okay. So now let's go ahead and change with the footer. I know I've skipped the middle one, but still, you know, work with me. Let's go ahead on the footer one over here. So on the footer one, again, the X is going to be um, zero because X always starts over this way. The Y is where we need to go ahead and add a little bit of um, responsiveness design over here. So the Y is going to be middle container dot Y plus took that yep plus middle container dot height. All right. So kind of already went ahead and sat over here nicely. So that's its Y. Now its height is going to be again the same type of design that we wanted over here. The same type of design is going to be uh, for the header one that we went and did the uh, main container. Now this might actually get a little whacked out, but it'll go ahead and change away. Right? So middle containers dot height. See, it went and switched it up. Don't worry about that. We can always come back and fix that later on if it, if it does need to be there. And then it's going to be the middle containers width. So that already feels a little responsiveness. So let's just double check on that. We went ahead and checked the change the X to zero. We did the Y to zero. I mean Y, we went ahead and added to this one over here. And then we went and made sure that it's height and it's width matches the parent one over here. Now I know you see that little bit of gap. This will be fixed right now because we're gonna work on a middle container. Now middle container, there's a little bit of extra work involved over here. First, it's X will be zero, all right? X is always the easy part, X is zero. Now, it's Y has to start on top of the header container height over here. So let's take a look, uh, fix that. The header container over here dot its Y, uh, actually dot its its uh, height, all right? So it went ahead and took care of that one, all right? That was easy piece over here. Now it's width, width again is pretty easy. Width is the main container's width. So main container dot width, all right? Took care of that. But now it's height. Height is where you gotta make sure that you focus over here a little bit more. Because what we wanna do on the height is that it has to be higher than this. Also, it has to make sure that it is subtracted by this one over here. So watch watch what I do, all right? Because there's gonna be a little bit of a addition, subtraction, but inside the, you know, subtracting a bracket series and inside the brackets, we gotta do one more addition. Watch what I'm doing over here. All right, so height is main containers height subtracted by and here we're gonna do some magic. Inside the magic, we're gonna say header container height plus footer container height. 
And you see, moment you made that change, this all even looks good. Remember that little uh, uh, blank space we had over there? It got filled up. So what we've done is we've taken this person's height, the, the, um, the header's height, the footer's height, and we've subtracted by the main full container's height, and that is what makes it fully responsive over here. Because remember, at the end of the day, we still got to work with uh, being responsive to the main container over there. So overall, these three sub, you know, the second level uh, containers that we've got are the second tier has already gone ahead and made sure that our app is fully uh, responsive over here. And this is, this is very important, right? First one, we did the main outside tier over there, or the primary, or the, uh, um, the primary one. Then we did the secondary. And now we're going to work on the, um, the final, you know, th uh, the, the third level, which is going and adding footers and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it just to make sure everything is looking good. Okay. So let's start with the headers and the footers container. So on the header container over here, I'm going to go ahead and drop a label. So I've selected the header container, I'm dropping that over here, and that is our header, um, um, our, our text or header over here. Now in this, I'm going to go ahead and add some text, and my text is going to be, I'm just copying and pasting from my notes so I don't make any mistakes. That's going to be my header over here, and I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that it is selected that. That's not an edit, it's just in view. That's something that I do, uh, but you can do it however you see fit. And then right now, just for the aesthetic viewing, I'm going to go ahead and at least expand it. Um, but now we go ahead and make it responsive, all right? So in the responsive, here's what we do. You make sure that you have the label selected, and in the label selected, we gotta work with its width. So the first thing I'm gonna do is with its width, in the width, you see there's a number over there, I wanna change the width to header container and header containers width. So you've already kind of figured out that, okay, he's done that for the width. I think for the height, he's gonna do the same thing, which is header container height. So that's basically it. Header container, you go to the header container dot height, and that is what's making it fully responsive. Now, we can also go ahead and change some stuff around. I can go ahead and make it center. That takes care of that. You know, just kind of add a little bit more aesthetic viewing over here. That's interesting what happened over here. Make sure it's width. Let's go and change that. Moment you change it, it will, I mean, even drag it a little bit, the numbers go, I mean, you start getting a number over there. So you just gotta make sure that it, it looks the exact same way. And then I just make sure since I touched it, let me go ahead and um, put that one over here. Okay, that looks good. Um, so we went ahead and added the uh, the height and the width. Make sure that the X and the Y matches the header containers X and the Y. So the header container again, it's X, and then it's Y. There we go. Again, that the whole concept of responsiveness is to make sure that it does match. Um, you know uh, the. Uh, um, the inside the container is he's got to match it over there because then you've already taken care of the container. So I went and added the um, the label over there. I went and added make sure it's height width x and y is good. Now I want to mess around with the font size over here. So for the font, if I just click on the font size, I immediately get that number over here. It is around a thirteen over here. What I want to do is I guess I want to reference the font size using the header container number. So here's what I'm going to do: header container, and I'm actually going to use the width. And again, my sweet spot was this number 46. You can change that to what I want because the reason I came up with this 46 was not just a random number. I actually saw what that font size was. If you go over here, that font size comes to around 30. If 30 is too big for you, go ahead and you know mess around with this number a little bit more. Go ahead and change it to 50. You know, it'll bring the numbers down so we can use it at 50 if you want. But this is what I'm trying to explain over here is that um, don't just take my word for it understand the logic behind it, and then to confirm the number that you have, come over here on the font size and on the advanced settings and you will see what is the actual number that you're getting. And if that is your sweet spot, great. Also keep in mind that we are referencing the width and now it is responsive. So if you were to change it from, uh, from landscape to portrait style, those numbers will change. And I'll show you that at the end. So kind of play around with it. You know, Start with what I'm teaching you but then tweak it to you know whatever your sweet spot over there, okay? And then finally, we can go ahead and make some changes to the colors and whatnot, so I'll just add my favorite color. This section doesn't have to be responsive, right? But now you've gone ahead and taken care of that. So we've gone and added the header text. Let's go ahead and add the header icon. Now my header icon for, um, 
uh, on the top was the hamburger menu. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go on the icons and I'm going to select my hamburger menu right here. And I made another mistake. See, I should have selected in the correct place. So I'm going to select that one and I'm going to come over here and search for that hamburger menu again. And this time it sits inside that uh, container. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and make sure the coloring is all good as well. So that looks good. And now we go ahead and start uh, changing again the sizes and the um, the settings over there. So first thing is let's go ahead and take care of the height with X and Y. So its height is going to be the same height as we had before. Is the header container X, header containers height. That is going to be the uh, the height. Now the width, the width can also be the exact same thing. So watch what I do over here. So in the width, come over here, oopsies, in the width, and I'm going to also call, even though it's the width, I'm going to call it the header container dot height. See, I, I personally did that is because I like the, the height over here. So I just said, okay, the hamburger menu needs to be kind of like almost a square. So the best way for me to make match that consistency is just to use the height for everything. The height for the height for the icon and then the height for the width for the icon. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. So there. And then finally, the, the X and the Y. Yep, the foot X is going to be the header containers X. And then the Y is going to be the header containers Y. All right, so that takes care of the top. Now, the top is a little bit easier, but I, that's why I wanted to start this way because the footer is going to be a little bit more different over there. So let's just jump to the footer one, right? So now I've come over here. I'm going to go click on the footer and we got to basically start again with the label on the bottom. So on the label, I can come over here on the insert and I'm going to drop a label nicely. It fit over there. Let me just go ahead and fill that up. And we start doing the exact same thing for the uh, the footer text. So the footer text uh, text itself, I'm going to do my favorite powered by power apps. And I didn't want to go ahead and type the whole thing in. Oh boy, pasted in the wrong place. there and i'll just go ahead and make it in center because that's got nothing to do with that i'll make it white fill that up a little bit too all right cool all right so now let's go ahead and start with its x and it's uh well actually let's start with um um yeah let's start with its width so the width one that's always the easy one the width one is going to be the footer containers width footer containers width and then the height is going to be the footer containers height. Cool, took care of that. Now for the footer containers or actually anything inside the labels, um, what you can do is make it a lot easier because once I've got the height and the width set up, what you can do is the X and the Y, you can actually use them as zero because it will automatically be responsive over here. So. I know for the top one over there, we went and added the X and the Y for the containers, but I want to use the bottom over here as an example because it's, it's, it's got a little bit more responsiveness requirement. So watch this though. The um, X, if I go and put that as zero, and for the Y, if I go and put that as zero, it is still fully responsive. And the reason for that is the height and the width is taken care of over here. And because the height and width is responsive, it is inside the container. And that's why it works so well over here. So kind of keep that in mind, all right? that you can work both ways over there. And I showed you both examples on the header. We did actually put the header container X, header container Y, but on the footer, we just put X is zero, Y is zero, and it still works. But I need to finally go ahead and also work on the um, uh, uh, the, uh, the font size. So the font size, again, is the exact same as what we have over here, that in the uh, font size, we went ahead and did the header containers with 50. Over here, its font size will be exactly the same, footer containers with 50. So okay, footer, container, width, divided by, and I'll put that as 50. And this is what it is, all right? Works pretty well. Now, finally, on the footer, we need to drop an icon. So I'll come over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab, oops, the icon. Yeah, I was in the insert. Go to the icons. And over here, I'm going to add my settings gear. Went ahead and fit that. And I want the settings to be on the way to the right. So let's go ahead and change that as well. For now, I just moved that manually. But we need to make it responsive. 
So its um, its height and width is going to be the same technique we took to go here. Is that even though for the height we made it the headers, uh, the 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 header uh, containers height, but its width also we use the header containers height. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to come on that and I'm going to go ahead and grab its um, uh, its height. Come on height, where are you? Right there. So I'm going to use the uh, footer containers height. And then for its width, I'm also going to use footer container height. So that was pretty easy. Now, its X is going to be the footer containers. Um, well, the, the Y will be the footer containers height or the Y could just be zero. We leave it at Y because remember, I just told you the same thing about the label. It'll be responsiveness. But its X is what we got to move around a little bit. So its X is going to be footer containers full width minus the icon. So it's going to be icon three. And see, it's times like these when I need to reference the icon, it's a good time to actually change the name settings icon. So over here is going to be now now that I know that name over here. Um, and I could put in like an FC before that or an FC after it. So I know that it is the footer container. But it's times like these like when I'm actually referencing a formula for that, that's when I actually give it a little name. Um, all right, so it's going to be settings icon dash width and it moves it automatically over here so remember the footer containers width so i'm pushing it all the way to the right if i just left the footer container width it'd be out somewhere over here but i'm subtracting it by the width of the icon so it brings it back in view and kind of you know now that you'll play around with it and you're seeing how i'm doing this it'll start making sense to you so getting in and putting in some hands-on effort will actually start making sense over here all right so you've actually accomplished a lot already we went ahead and took care of the entire um you know tier one level um of you know just the container we even did the tier two which is going ahead and adding the the header middle and the footer we went to take care of the tier three for the header and the footer as well now let's work on the final piece which is the middle containers over here so in the middle container there's a little bit more extra work involved we got to first go ahead and add two vertical containers so i'm going to come over here i mean come back over here and i'm going to add vertical container one and I'm gonna go ahead and add another vertical container too. So it went ahead and took care of these two ones over here. Just make sure I've gone ahead and dropped that. Oh, see it went subsection over here again. See, gotta get used to that. I wanna add another vertical container but not as a subsection of this vertical container. I want it on the middle ones. I gotta select that and I gotta add it here. And now that makes sense. Cause you know, when I was looking at it, it's like, this doesn't look like what I want. And then when I went back and looked at it, it's like, ah, that's because it went as a subsection not that full section okay so that's good so now we got to start messing around with these vertical container um sections over here so i'm going to start with the setting on the right okay now you'll kind of make sense what it is so i'm going to change this one's height to the actual middle container so i'm going to start over here and then i'm going to go to its height and its height is going to be the middle containers height and that's what took care of the responsiveness. And we'll kind of do the same thing over here as well, but we'll, we'll wait for that. Also in here for its um, height, um, for its width, by default it is set to flexible. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. But I wanna mess around with a few other things like the justify for the vertical, I'm gonna make it center. And then also for the align horizontal, I'm gonna leave it as is for now, nothing much. And then in the container section over here, the alignment in the container, I'm gonna go ahead and select one for the center. And the reason I'm doing all of that is because I'm going to now drop a um, HTML text inside it, right? See HTML text, when I go ahead and select all of that, it actually becomes fully responsive to a section that I need to. So for the HTML text, I'm going to actually um, change it to custom. So in the custom, I'm going to select that and I'm going to go with expanding it all the way out. And then I'm going to set the flexible height. So it fills it up over here. Two important settings change. And we didn't do the container one. We went and made it custom. Go ahead and uh, stretch it and then make it flexible. And then as far as the text itself, you can put whatever I want. I already had a pre-built text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it from here. I'm gonna go all the way there. Copy it directly inside here. And so I just made it nice and textile. You can put in whatever else you want. You can actually put in some dynamic text as well from other you know, other information. But that's basically what I did over here, just to go ahead and grab the information. Now, for the sake of this test, I'm intentionally not putting in any formatting style. You can do that, but I'm intentionally not doing it just to kind of show you how 
the differences made over there. Because um, when we do the look at the whole thing at the end, you will see that okay, it's not too bad because what happens is it's responsive. So right now, even the number, the names are a little bigger over here. Like there's almost like a header one, header two, and then the text, normal text. Um, you will see that the responsiveness kind of takes care of that. Like even if it doesn't fit in one line, all right, it'll wrap it around to the bottom one. So intentionally, I'm not putting it so that you will see for yourself that you know what. For some situations, I may not make need the font size to be fully responsive because in this situation, wrapping up text is actually a good idea. Now, that doesn't work for the headers and the footers, though, because you don't want the header and the footer to wrap up. It just looks messy. But in this case, it's not bad. So intentionally not putting in that um, font size over here, right? So we took care of that piece over here. Let's go and now jump into um, the one on the left. So on the one on the left, again, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and change that from here to custom. I'm going to go ahead and now make it um, center. All right, and then also I'm going to go ahead and change uh, the flexible width. It's all good over here, so we're good. And then, yeah, um, one more thing in the um, uh, in the in the width over here, I'm going to go ahead and change its size to three. Like fill portion, I'm going to change that to three. And the reason that did not work is because I was selecting the text. So I click on that, and if I select, the, if I click on that, and I change that to three. It went and did it that way. Three of four. So I could actually go ahead and make that as two, and that would be a little bit more easier. Two of three or three of three. But kind of go ahead and play around with that to see exactly what you need. Um, but that's basically what I've done is I've gone ahead and filled up more text space over there, and I've made that in the fill portions, which is already flexible over there. Cool. All right. Um, also, a couple of things you can play around with is the minimum width amount and the maximum width amount. You can go ahead and play around with however you see that is fit. Uh, but this is basically what I've done over here is I'm going to make sure that that is the uh, two of threes over there uh, in the fill portions. You can go ahead and change that however you see fit over there. Okay, so now the last piece, which is on the button side. So on this container over here, um, I'm going to select some. So on this container, we went ahead and um, changed the custom section over there. But I also want to go ahead and change it on with the justify on the horizontal. So the justify, I'm going to centerize it. And then also I'm going to change the just sorry the horizontal I made it center on the justify I've gone ahead and made it uh, space between and this will start making some sense when we go ahead and put in the button so let's just add some buttons and we'll see how we want so here I'm going to add I'll say about seven buttons I'm going to add one two three four five six seven. So you can change that. The height is what I want to see. Align the container. Go ahead and stretch that to the stretch one over here. And then the height in between them or the gap in between them, you can go ahead and change it around as well. So like the gap over here is zero. You can go ahead and make that to you know 20 and whatnot, just kind of forcing how much you want it. But this is enough for you to start working with right now. Now, as far as each of the buttons inside it, I am going to intentionally leave it as what it is, like the X and the Y and all of that. I'm going to leave it as is. We'll just see how the responsiveness works because we went ahead and put the responsiveness designs over here. I don't want to change anything for each and every buttons over there. We'll just leave it as is and we'll go ahead and play around with just to see how all of that works. But it is interesting to see that when you go ahead and select over here and if you go ahead and look at you know each of the buttons, how it is set, like set by container, it automatically kind of matches to what we already have over here. Um, so I just leave it as is because it's important to see that once it's inside the container, how it, it goes ahead and gets it affected. Now, the only thing is for at the top container, the middle containers on the left one, this is completely up to you. Is Do you want to hide it or do you want to, um, you know, the scrolling or the overflow, do you want to actually add the scroll functionality? Because uh, what you could do is you could add that and leave that, the wrap is off, or you could keep that on and you can keep this off as well, or you can do both. Now, what I have done is for this section over here, I've actually gone ahead and allowed scroll because when an app gets really small, I want the scroll functionality available over here. So pick and choose what you want. Um, what happens with the wrap sometimes is when you go ahead and get it small, the buttons will automatically wrap, but then the responsiveness that you added for the height and the width gets really messy on the wrap side. So I personally favor the scrolling functionality and I leave the wrapping section off over there. Um, so you know, take what it is for that and go ahead and give it a shot. So now let's go ahead and just do a save. And in the save, I'll also go ahead and publish it. Now we can also do a quick test over here. I can go ahead and select that. And it is kind of being responsive to some section over here. And I'm not going to tinker around with that one. But the main responsiveness test that I like over here is I'll just go ahead and refresh that to make sure I haven't lost anything. 
You don't want to refresh when it's in editing in the studio. This one I can yeah, easily refresh. Okay, so I'm coming out over here. This is the one that we just built. And to make sure that I'm really getting the full functionality, I'm going to come right up to the top after the ampersand and I'm going to put in hide nav bar equals true. So I made sure that the top ribbon has gone away. And this is what it's looking like now. See? And as I do it, See, see the first couple of things, there's a lot going on over here. So see the text, let's focus on the text over here for the HTML. Remember how I said that if you get small, it automatically wraps it in. And that is what I like about this scenario, the HTML text over here. That is why I didn't change the, um, um, you know, the functionality of the font size over here. But for the header, the icons, again, the footer text and the icons over here, we wanted to go in and make that fully responsive. That's why we went, you know, change the uh, phone number. I mean, phone number, change the um, the font size number and things like that to kind of give it that full responsiveness. And then the scrolling functionality worked really well for the buttons. You see that now, if you you know make it all the way big, the scroller kind of does show up already over here, kind of giving end users the idea that hey, this is cool. If it gets a little bigger, you've got that scroll um, mechanism available. And then the buttons. See that. We didn't do anything to separate the height or the gap height. We put 20, but that was just to give it that, you know, a little aesthetic view over there. But all of this is automatically happening thanks to the container and the responsiveness inside the container. If you didn't recognize it, for the buttons, we didn't put any height, we didn't put any width, nothing. And it automatically goes ahead and gets responsive, you know, just because of that. Now, we could make it super responsive by going ahead and putting the buttons and the button font size also responsive and things like that. Uh, but this this is a good place to start with and for you to understand that. So one last thing is when I go over here to my you know more tools and I go into the developer tools, in the developer tools, I have the option to change this into different styles. So right now, see, it went and put that to the responsive design of whatever. Um, I can go ahead and change that to, say, an iPhone X, and it gives me that functionality. I can go and change that to a iPad, and it gives me that functionality. I can go ahead and even switch it around and rotate it. And you see, it works. It just works for all different kinds, whether your phone is in the portrait mode, your phone is in the landscape mode, your iPad's in the portrait mode, landscape mode. It just works because of the flexibility of the responsiveness once you're inside containers. And once you're inside a container, reference the container, and it just works. Wow, so we just covered a lot in the last you know, 30, 35 minutes over there. Uh, but you know, this is a very important step in how you make the app fully responsive. The whole concept is containers. You gotta reference the containers with the first primary one, and then add subsections to it, which is already referencing the prim um, the you know the main primary one over there. But also, the, once you're in, inside a container, you don't always need to make you know everything fully matched to that. A great example was the buttons one, right on the on the left side over there. We didn't change its width, we didn't change its height, or the x or the y. But it, as long as it was in the container, and the container was responsive, the buttons already became responsive. So this is a good place for you to start. And what I've done is this app itself, I've gone ahead and put that in the Power Users community. Uh, so the fully finished app that I showed at the beginning, you have full access to that. Uh, that way you can download it because there might be a little bit things here and there that I just missed giving uh, examples over there, but you have full access to that. So and the link is down below. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep power apping.